Hi there, Tim Mitchell here. One of the more common questions I get from my consulting clients is how can we make our packages uh, in such a way that when something is updated downstream, whether it's a connection string or a database name or some other configurable property, that we don't have to go through a, a huge exercise of updating every single package that we have. So there is some good news here in integration services because in every version of SSIS there has been a feature that would allow you to externalize those values into a config file or a database table or some similar structure so that when something was updated you didn't have to go through the, the whole exercise of updating every single package with that new value. If you're using 2012 and 14 and using the catalog deployment mode, it's even easier because we have something called parameters and environments that you can configure in the, the package in the project. You can configure parameters that define those values that you're expecting to be provided at runtime. And then you can have on the server side or on the catalog side environments, which are collections of variables that would be used at runtime to supply those values. So, in this brief video, I want to show you how to use the parameters on the project side and then once we deploy it out to the catalog, how you can align an environment with those values or those parameters that are expected at runtime. So I've created a project, just a blank project, that we'll use for this purpose. So I've got a blank package in here that's configured by default. I'm going to drag across a data flow task, go into that data flow. I'm going to load data from a flat file into a database table. And to do that, I need a flat file source. I'm going to need an OLEDB destination. And I'm going to configure my flat file source using one of the sample source files that I have on my system. This is going to be some sales data. I want to change the code page. Occasionally, integration services will uh, mischaracterize that code page. I'm going to use the 1252 code page. Look under my columns, and it looks like we're all good there. Now, with the source configured, I'll take the output from the source, map that into the input of the destination, and I'm going to create a new connection to my TestDB database, which I used for my destination. I'm going to create a new table, just simply going to call that table sales, and it's going to have all the default metadata here. Check my mappings, it looks like everything is mapping across exactly on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, so our package is ready to run. Let me go ahead and click Start, try that out, and it looks like we're loading about 4,600 rows of data from my source to my destination. Now, these are all static settings. So if my source file name ever changes, if the database name that I'm writing to ever changes or the server name changes, I'm going to have to go into this package, open it up, change the setting, save it, redeploy it, hopefully test it at some point along the way. Um, that is a lot of overhead. It's probably not a big deal for a single package, but what if I've got a dozen or a hundred or maybe a thousand or more packages in my organization? If we end up having one server that's accessed by thousands of packages and that server name changes, by default I've got to touch every one of those integration services packages. Open it up, save it, redeploy it, test it, make sure that it works properly. That's a lot of overhead. So there are a couple of things that we can do to overcome that. I mentioned earlier in SSIS 2012 and 14, if you're using the project deployment mode, which is the default, you can use project and package level parameters to substitute those values at runtime. So I'm going to show you on the package first, then I'll jump over to the project level. When you're working in 2012, assuming that your project is in project deployment mode, you're going to see a tab called parameters. I can go into that tab and set up one or more parameters. If I click uh, the add parameter button here, it will show me in the grid view. I can configure the name, the value, and so on. And actually what I want to do is go into the project itself. You can see that there is a node or there is a, a file item over here called project.params. It's created by default in the project deployment mode. And in opening that up, you can see that we get the same type of interface that we were looking at on the package level parameters. The behavior is exactly the same. The scope is different. 
So if I create a project level parameter, any package in this project will have visibility into that project parameter. So I want to use that just in case we have other packages that use that same parameter value. I'm going to create two new ones. I'm going to have one for my source connection for that file. I'm going to have another one for my destination connection for the relational database. I'm going to rename that to p file path. And just as a matter of naming convention, I like to put the number or the letter p in front of each one of my parameter names just to quickly give me some visual confirmation that it is a parameter and not a variable. And on the second one, we'll call this one p output db connection string. By default, it will type those as int32. I want to make those string values. And I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to go back to the package. I'm going to grab from the package on the control flow in the connection managers area. I'm going to grab the connection for the flat file and drop it into that default value. Same thing for the database connection. I'll go over to the properties window grab that full connection string from the properties window and paste it in there. So you can see that we had to specify the name, the data type, and then whatever default value if we chose to add a default value. A couple of other settings that we have available to us that we can specify. Um, sensitive and required. So these are by default both set to false on every variable. The required flag will tell this parameter that whenever any processor person executes this package or any package in this project, they have to supply a value for that parameter. The default is false, so they don't have to supply one if it's not explicitly required. The sensitive parameter flag will say that this is something that has sensitive information like a password or other sensitive bits of information, and it will obfuscate that both in the UI as well as in the logging. So while neither of these has any sensitive information on my database connection string, for example, I'm using Windows authentication uh, by using integrated security of SSPI. So I don't have a password in there. I don't have a password in here as well. So neither one of those needs to be sensitive. However, I do want them to be required because I want anyone or any person or process executing any package in this project to have to supply those connection string values. With those project parameter setup, I need to go back to my package. I'm going to do two things here. First of all, for both of my connections, I'm going to change those over to a project level connection. What this will do is in the event where another package needs to use the same connection, I don't have to reconfigure that or recreate it all over again. It can borrow the same one because I'm defining that at the project level as opposed to the package level. So it can be used across um, any package within this project. So that's the first thing I want to change. The second thing I want to change is I need to use for both of these connections, I need to use those parameter values as the connection strings for each one of these guys. So I'm going to go into my flat file connection manager. I'm going to go into the expressions. Click the drop down list and go to connection string. And under that expression, I'm going to use the file path parameter. I'll do the same thing for the database connection. For connection string on this one, I'm going to use the other project parameter. So we've attached expressions to both of those connection strings. And you can see if I look at the bottom for each one of those, you can see that there's a tiny little indicator that says FX on there. That indicates that we have an expression on that property. So if it starts behaving in a way I don't expect, or if I want to reconfigure that value, I know that I need to look not at the, the statically defined value that's set for that connection string. I need to look at the expression that's building that behind the scenes. All right, so on the, the package and the project side, that's all we need to do. And I'm gonna go ahead and rerun that just to make sure that it's running okay. We should get the same uh, 4,800 or so, 4,600 rows that we had previously. And we're all set there. So the last thing we need to do in Visual Studio is to go into the project. I'm gonna right click and go to deploy. It's gonna walk me through a wizard. I'm gonna deploy to my local machine. So 
it does require me to put this project into a folder and I can't put it in the root folder of the SSISDB catalog. So I could drop that into my project one folder. I actually want to create a whole separate folder for that and I could go back to, to Management Studio and do that but there's a shortcut way to do that in here. I'm going to call this Testing Params and Environments. We'll give it the same description as the name Highlight that, click OK, click Next, and Deploy. It'll take just a couple of seconds to deploy that, and we're all set. So we've done everything we need in Visual Studio. Let's shift over to SQL Server Management Studio, and then we'll execute the package from there. So in Management Studio, we can now browse out to the folder and then the project that we just deployed. So by default, I can't yet see that folder. It doesn't refresh that automatically, but if I click refresh, now we have the new folder that we had just created. And if I drill into that folder, I've got projects and environments. I'll come back to the environments folder in just a minute. But if I drill into the projects folder, I now have the project that I just deployed. And in the projects, or rather the packages node, I've got all the packages, and in this case there was only one, uh, that would be present in that project. Just like we did before, I can right click and execute that. So in the execute package dialog box, you can see that it lists all the parameters that we had. Um, one thing that, that you will notice is that if we had both project and package level parameters, they would both appear here. There's really not a distinction between package and project level parameters as far as the UI goes. So I can uh, go in and for each one of these, I can click the ellipsis and you can see that it does give me a, a warning here. The reason that we have this exclamation point out here is that those are required values. Remember we set that required flag on both of them and it will indicate to me that I have to supply, externally supply a value. For each one of those, when I click that, it will by default remember if I had a default value in the package it will remember that and let me simply click OK. But I do have to go through the exercise because that is a parameter that's, uh, that's been marked as required. Same thing on the database connection string. So now when I click OK, it's going to run that. It's going to pop up a, a window telling me that the execution has started. Um, just this first time, I'm going to go ahead and show that report. We'll not show it for subsequent executions. And it runs quickly, so looks like it's already succeeded. So we're all set there. So uh, you can see that in manually executing the package, we can go through and instead of relying on whatever connection strings were in the database, I can specify those external to the package and I could change that database name or change the file name if I so choose. Now, I do have to do that every time. So for every execution, I would have to go through and specify every single variable value or every single parameter value that was required. Um, that's a lot of extra work, and the creative lazy guy in me doesn't want to do that. So there is an easier way to supply those values at runtime, and we can do that by way of environments. If I go into my environments folder, I'm going to create a new environment, and we'll call this env environments params and environments demo. You can see that I like to abbreviate. We'll use the same description. Um, this is a, a bit of a, we'll call it a quirk, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's a feature, but in the UI there are other elements that I need to configure. In particular, I need to configure the variables that will be in this environment and the permissions for who can and who can't use, uh, use this environment. None of that appears by default. It only gives me the general tab and there's nothing else over here. Uh, this is the quirk in the UI where I have to create the environment. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then after I create the environment, then I have to go back into it. And now I get a couple of other tabs that we didn't have before, the variables tab and the permissions tab. So I'm going to go to variables tab. I'm going to create two variables. And you can probably guess these will correspond with those parameter values that we're going to supply to the packages that we just created. So we'll call this one vFile path. This will be the database connection string. They'll both be of type string. And then for the values on those, I'm going to cheat again. 
I'm going to jump back over to Visual Studio and borrow those values. So here's my value for the file path and then my value for the database connection string. All right, clicking OK and then back on Management Studio, you can see that I now have the environment that we just created. Now, you might think that you can simply go in and execute and supply the name of the environment, except that that is grayed out. It doesn't yet let me use an environment. I have to separately go through a step of providing a, a reference or basically associating an environment with a particular project. And into the References tab, I'm going to add in that project a reference to that environment. Now back on the Parameters tab, I need to go into each one of my parameters and align the environment variable value that we're going to use. So this is for my file path. File path for that one. And then for my database connection string, use the drop down list. So this is pulling those values from that environment that we have just associated with this project. So now we're all set. So we can go into that package and execute that. And before I do that, we're going to do some row count validation in just a minute. So let me go back to my query window. I'm going to truncate that table that we've been loading over and over again. Select the count. We know it's going to be zero because I just truncated it. And now I'm going to execute that package. So now we see what we expected to see earlier. I've got the environment. That checkbox is lit up and I can specify that I'm using the params and environment demo. When I do that, it supplies the value for each of those parameters that's required. It's using the variable names that I supplied from the environment that we just created. And now my exclamation points are gone because I'm providing all the information I need to provide. So click OK. No, I'm not going to look at the report. We'll give that just a second or so to run. And now I'll select count from that table. That's the same 4,594 records that we were loading before. So uh, even though my drawing the box doesn't work well, that's exactly the row count we expected. We know that supplying those values will substitute at runtime the database connection string and the flat file connection string. But how do we know it's working properly? So we can fairly easily test that. I'm going to substitute a different folder, or rather a different file, at runtime. So we were using that east file. I'm going to substitute and instead use my central file. So I do have a header in there, so we're going to subtract one from whatever the row count is. So 487 lines in the file, so I should have exactly 486 rows, assuming that we do use the central file as opposed to the east file that we have been using. So back on Management Studio, let's go into the environment. So I could go all the way back, again, put in that static value in the package and substitute it there, but I've got to do that for every single package that uses that value. So this is going to be a certain shortcut for me. I'm going to widen that out. Instead of sales order header underscore east, that's now going to be central. Now all we have to do, I'm going to retruncate that table again. And on Management Studio, right click Execute again. Again, use the environment. No, I don't want to see the report. Give it just a brief second, and if everything works properly, we should have exactly 486 rows in there. And that's what we have. So you can see that replacing those runtime values when we're using SSIS parameters in catalog deployment mode, and then matching up those parameters with values in an SSIS environment, the process of doing maintenance on rapidly changing or even slowly changing values um, is made much easier because I can do that across the board and touch just a, a handful of configurations as opposed to going package by package by package and changing every one of those. Uh, this is a feature that it, honestly it's one of my favorite features of Integration Services 2012 in the catalog deployment mode. Uh, it's one of the more compelling stories in my opinion for upgrading from 2005 or 8 into 2012 or 14.
So hopefully this was useful for you and I hope that you find some use and some purpose for using parameters and environments in your organization. As always, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section.